G'day. Today's video I'm having a look at the POCO X3 NFC model running the Snapdragon 732G and this one has 6 gig of internal RAM. Just curious to see how well Dolphin emulation will happen on here or GameCube emulation. So at the minute I've got Resident Evil 4 loaded up and just going to play a little bit of it and check it out for audio emulation and whatnot. The internal resolution is set to 1. Right now I'm just playing using a DualShock 4. Brightness is a bit dim, so we'll just turn that up. Now we're talking. Now I do believe I don't have the controls mapped out quite right, but I'll still, see if it's, or I'll still attempt to see if it's playable. Trying to figure out the run button. There we go. Excuse me, sir. Bolt might help. More ammo would be nice. Yeah, I'm just going to try and power down the game just to see if I get a whole bunch of NPCs loaded up. I won't be going that way. I'm pretty sure there's a booby trap somewhere around here. Whoop, there we go. To me, the audio does seem to be slightly distorted. And while I'm here, we'll do a bit of a quick save. No one health, destined to die. There's a bit of fade in, fade out. If you look in the distance, you can see the chapel cutting in and out as they rotate to the right hand side. But for the, exp for the cost of a stable frame rate, I'm 
pretty happy to accept that. Alright, onwards to another game. And here I've got some Tony Hawk 3. Which does seem to struggle. But if I go into graphic settings and just change the resolution. Right, graphic settings. Show frame rate, yes. Enhancements. Internal revolution one times, filtering off. Back again. We're now happily running at 60. Or a bit below it. Not quite a solid frame rate here, not quite a solid stick, 60 as you would like. Turn the audio off, you could probably get away with playing it. There we go, a bit of frame drop. Granted, it doesn't quite run as good as the 855 Plus chip that I've had on my Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G. But that did have the issue of it not natively having Android 10. It had Android 9, which had a lot of issues with DualShock or Bluetooth controllers, where it would just time out and cease functioning. So, yeah, I'd put this in the maybe pile. If you could tolerate a few slowdowns every now and then during the game, you could probably get away with playing this just fine. And here I've got Fug 2, Tony Hawk Underground 2, which should hopefully run alright as well. Right now, I've just clicked on campaign. You can definitely hear the audio dip. Let's skip this and get into the game itself. Not a good speed at all. Sadly, not very playable. And here we have Tony Hawk Underground 1, which is running about as well as I expected it to run. Surprisingly, whoop, there we go. Actually, it's run a little bit better than I was originally expecting. Still, not not too crash hot. But I was expecting it to be a lot less playable than it actually is here.
as you can see there, nice and smooth. Frame rate dying. So no, couldn't really recommend playing this either. And next up here I have got Wind Waker. It does have pockets of good frame rate. To get a large amount of area in. Right now, if I push the stick too far up, we go into the crouch mode that's here. But if I lightly hold it, it's fine. I feel like if I had the mapping, the mapping set out right for the controllers and the sensitivity just right, this might almost be playable. As you can see, it definitely drops, drops frame rate. Especially in large open areas. But not bad. A bit better than expected. Oh, there we go. Now we're chugging. And my A button has failed again. So probably a thumbs down for playback of this particular one. And lastly, I've got the Twilight Princess, which is chugging along a fair bit itself. Similar control issues as Wind Waker. Assumably a very similar control scheme. some bad frame rate dips. Just my cat asking for pats. Ooh, fair bit of chug there. Doesn't like that bloom effect. Guess we'll skip this. They're mostly unplayable, I'd say. Potentially disabling audio may improve it. Audio. Uh, right now I'm unable to disable it. So right now I'd probably classify the Zelda series not overly playable on the 7, uh, 732G. Anyway, that's just a few games getting played in the Poco X3. Hope this gives you an idea of its rough emulation. One of the other games I do have on my list is Need for Speed Underground 2, which I know that struggles in the 855, so I'm not even going to bother loading it because I know it's not going to work well at all. Anyway, catch us later.